Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Lance from Nerfless TV. Today we're going to be doing something again a little bit different. I'm going to be basically doing a small tutorial on the Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini. I've been reading a lot of uh, articles on people trying to figure out exactly how to use the ATEM Mini as their primary streaming device for game streaming. I don't personally use it for game streaming, I use it for um, training materials, but the process is fairly similar to set it up for game streaming as well as training. So we're going to go through the steps needed and exactly how to do each individual item. I'm not going to be going into super amounts of depth in each item, but you will be able to set it up for your game streaming if you have the pretty much the same setup as me or similar. First of all, let's speak about the limitations of this. If you are using the built-in pass-through for your game play, you will be limited to 1080p at 60Hz. That is unfortunately the base for this device. Um, it also allows you to stream at 1080p 60Hz, which these days is pretty much more than enough for anyone. The other thing is you won't be able to do a lot of the overlays and stuff like that that you do on OBS etc to show new subscribers and all that lovely stuff you won't be able to do within this device so that you'll still have to have in OBS but the pleasure with this device is that you can have multiple inputs so in this case I've got my camera that I'm busy talking to you on and I can plug in a PC I can plug in an iPad I can plug in pretty much whatever I want up to the four HDMI connections that it's got it also has some built-in connections which I'm not going to go into here because um, they aren't relevant to this specific subject. Okay, first of all, connecting everything. At the back you've got your four HDMI cable inputs. I've only got three plugged in at the moment. If you want to use the pass-through for your gameplay, then you'll need to put the PC on HDMI 1 and then your output would be on the uh, the only output port there is basically I'll show you later how to set it up so that it is a not a preview of the actual stream itself but a throughput a low latency throughput of the HDMI one and then what I've done is I've got uh, the camera on the HDMI two I've just got a standard camera that I use for everything you can use pretty much any camera that uh, has an HDMI output any of these small Sony's and all that type of thing as long as I've got an HDMI output and they can output at least 1080p you can plug it into this and then on HDMI 3 I've just got uh, my iPad plugged in just as an example so that I can show you that you know you can use multiple devices and switching between those devices is pretty easy I use the iPad for my training so that's why I have already got it set up so that I can plug uh, I can display it through HDMI 3 and then obviously you need to plug your power in you also need to plug in there is a USB-C port in the back here which you then need to plug into the PC that you're going to be running OBS or whatever the case is one of the best things about this ATEM Mini is that everything that you're feeding into this and switching and green screening and keying or keying and whatever the case is will come through as one webcam feed so you can pretty much set it up with any software that you use to stream as long as it supports webcam webcam inputs which 90 percent of them do, uh, do the only piece of pro software that i found that does have problems seeing this as a webcam or anything else is uh, wirecast but that's more for high-end uh, broadcasting as opposed to well high-end streaming as opposed to um, something like obs which is more commonly used the only other things that I have connected here are obviously my output for my PC and a network cable. You can plug a network cable into this and uh, the next step is I'll actually show you how to set up the software so that you can get the real big features of this device active because at the moment it's great. You can pretty much just take it anywhere and go and stream from those four ports and if you plug in four different cameras you've got four different angles and it's great but to unlock the true power so things like green screening and uh, switching between um, doing your settings for your 
picture in picture if you don't use a green screen you know you want to be able to resize and and have it go to any corner basically that you'll need the software for but the basics you can do straight with the buttons that are provided here okay next you'll need to go to open a web browser and go to blackmagicdesign.com and then click on the support tab at the top here you click on the support tab once you've got to the support tab then all you need to do is you'll see over here ATEM live production switches click on that and what it'll do is it'll filter on the left hand side here the downloads related to all of these ATEM switches which obviously the ATEM mini is one of and then just look for the top ATEM switcher um, software this is ATEM switcher 8.1 at this today this is the latest and then click and download pretty much whichever operating system you're using i'm using a mac but you could be using a windows pc to set it up i actually have it running on my game pc as well as uh, my mac because it's free so and you can connect that was the one thing that um, i wanted to say with the network cable if you've got a network cable connected to it and you've got your ip addresses set up on the device which we we'll again will show you now with the software you can connect using the software anywhere on your network and do pretty much switching everything you can do with the switches at the the, the the hardware switches on this device you can then do with the software so you can have a second machine it doesn't even have to be close to this that you can go and click 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 and do all your switching while you're busy streaming anyway so download your your relevant piece of software It'll ask you for all this type of thing. I just normally click over here, download only. Your download will start. And away you go. I'm not going to download it, but you would because I already have it. Okay, so once you've installed that piece of software, you can now get into setting it up, which sounds very daunting, but it's not. I'm just going to open up now the, that comes with two pieces of software. The one is this setup utility. And the other one is the, the actual control panel. But we won't look at the control panel now because you'll open the setup facility first. If you are opening this piece of software on the PC or Mac that the USB is connected to. So that webcam connection, the USB connection, it'll automatically see it. You don't need to set up anything on the network. You'll see mine over here. It actually says it's connected via the network and the USB because it sees it on the network. You then click here and you can go and set up if you do want to be able to see it on the network then you'll have to manually set up an ip address your subnet in the gateway you'll need a little bit of network knowledge for that and you'll also need to know what sort of uh, what ip address range and subnet you are using on your local network but you don't necessarily need that because you can connect to it directly through the usb software so it's not important these over here let me just reset it to what it would normally be okay it is reset to what it normally be so these we're not going to get into a lot of these now but basically this is just the way that the transitions are and if the transitions stay when you're switching between cameras once you've done that save and you can connect this other button and it will open up our control software so basically what you're seeing here is exactly the buttons and everything as they're shown here you'll notice that these program buttons this is pc uh, head that's the camera ipad mac those are the four ports so that's the four hdmi ports okay if we go to the hdmi normally these would just be cam 1 cam 2 cam 3 cam 4 but what you can do is, and it's probably better to do for organization so that you don't get lost and you know exactly what you're doing. You click this little gear icon down the bottom and on labels over here, you can actually then go and say, right, HDMI, the name is PC and the label is PC. The label that appears on the button. And I can then say, okay, well, it's the headshot. So I'm gonna label on the button and that's my iPad and that's my Mac. We're not going to get into all those outputs if you do want me to have a look at all of these individually and get more into depth of each uh, item then let me know in the comments below and uh, 
I'll make some more videos on that. General, pretty much what your stream is going to be. They're all variations of 1080p. I just leave it set to 60p because, you know, gameplay, 60p. And that's pretty much it. Once you've done that, you're fine. Now, when I, in the beginning, I said, if you want to use your gameplay and you want to use the pass through, the HDMI that goes out here, by default will show the entire program. So your face with the gameplay, with everything, it'll show everything. It's basically a second output of your program. The same that goes out via the USB. But you can change that to be a low latency pass through for HDMI 1. By going to the output menu of your ATM software control, and you'll see there's the, the, the names that I've given each HDMI, so you can actually say which one of those it must show. But if you want PC Direct, you just select the one down the bottom here, and that'll be your low latency pass through of the HDMI one. You can have it preview by default, it'll be program. So that's everything that's you know showing on your USB that'll also be shown that HDMI. With us renaming inputs and, and getting going, you want to save all the settings because when you power this ATEM Mini down and you power it back up again, it's going to lose all these settings. It's I'm sure they can fix that in software, but it is going to happen. So right from the beginning now, we've already renamed our buttons. So we go and save and just go file, save, give it a name, just gonna say Lance. Okay, where you want to save it, you say save, and it's gonna bring up this, which basically allows you to individually select what you wanna save. I just say, click everything, save it, and it's gonna save a file, an XML file, that you can then load, and it'll automatically have all your settings. And of course, if you want to restore it at a later stage, you just go file, restore, and it'll show you all those files there, or XML files, just look for the latest one, and away you go. Ask you again, what you want to restore you just say everything and done you now want to make sure that you can appear in obs so that you can see exactly what you're doing so open obs and then in the source just obviously add in a uh, video capture device don't use it will list a black magic devices you're not going to do that this is just a straight cam okay i've already listed there but let's open a new one select the device you'll see it it always listed as black magic design Okay, there it's going to show me and my PC, which is over that side. And we don't want to use a preset. We want to use full HD. Uh, 60 frames a second. And there you go. I'll just stretch it out on our canvas. Uh, we probably should have renamed that. ATM Mini. This is obviously not going to bring the sound, so you want to add a sound device as well. Uh, audio input. I'll go ATM Mini Audio. And again, you just select Blackmagic Design. And you'll see a new item added there and you can actually see the game and my voice. Okay, so we now have our settings there. But as you can see, I'm sort of this block in the corner. I had the green screen, green screen on over here. This is a Kia, which I'll show you how to set up now, but you don't need to use the Kia. If you actually don't have a green screen, then all you do is you go over here to this picture in picture and you turn it on. And there we have picture in picture. And you can actually move it around to the various corners simply by doing that. But obviously that's kind of small and maybe that's not exactly the same right position. What you do is you go to the ATEM software over here and you go over to upstream key one and you'll see over here DVE. Okay, so what that does is you get to select 
the basically the connection where your camera is on or the one that you actually want to eventually key or uh, in this case move around in this case it's headshot so I've selected headshot there now you can actually do the position so uh, or maybe I want to move it around a bit there or scale it up a bit there uh, maybe get it a well that's just not even okay maybe that's fine the mask this is what you use to actually do your cropping so if you want to take away the left right all that type of thing this is where you'll do it what you do is you start adding values there and you'll see that uh, in this case the top is coming down okay I really don't want the top to come down but I mean you can let's set uh, four over there you'll see on the right hand side it's cropped a bit more so there you'll go in and set all your your cropping you can have a drop shadow on the box as well or you can have a border in this case the border is always active but it's set as black um, maybe we want it to be a, a really loud yellow and you can set individual colors for the border there and you can crank up the width you know it's softness all that type of thing and see now you can actually see that we're not really on the right position there once you've done all your changes yeah if you want to save that specific position you have some keyframe sets over here so basically these are saved positions and you've got two of them that you can set you simply buy once you've done all the settings in that you can click set a and it'll whenever you click that button see B is set to that A will be set to that this is also the same position keyframe settings that you'll use if you're actually doing green screening so you can either have one or the other but without having to go and reset everything it's unfortunate but that's the way that uh, this is working at the moment okay the one good thing with the the ATEM mini is you can actually first of all let me see go through these buttons over here on each of the HDMI ports you will see that it has a set of keys above it which are for the audio I've got them set to AFV which is audio follow video so in other words if the video is not showing on your stream the audio for that video won't be playing which is pretty much what you want if you're on the screen you want to be able to talk if the game is up you want the sound from the game coming etc etc you can also just turn it on or off permanently reset it um, to start the feed again of the audio and you've got little volume switches underneath here so I can decide you know on the fly okay my, my game volume is a bit too high a bit too low you don't need to go to OBS to go and do this you can actually just do it here each increment will be um, I think it's 0.3 or something percent and you just up and down and you can set your game volume down or up okay with the audio follow video it's pretty simple when it's red like this that's because the audio is coming through from both the camera and the uh, in this case two is gameplay uh, two is the camera one is gameplay so the gameplay sound as you can see over there is up so it's coming through if I change it to say the iPad you'll see that the iPad comes up on the screen there and if I click it again it'll bring back the picture in picture which is quite nice especially I mean you don't need to switch yourself on and off you can just set yourself there or not and of course you can also just go over here to the picture in picture settings and just turn yourself off the ATEM Mini also has two microphone inputs so you can actually have a it's a little 3.5 millimeter connection you can have two mics coming in there for that and then they will be on top here you'll see there's separate controls for each of them which is uh, obviously the volume up and down and the audio on and off okay for this next little bit i'm going to pull down my green screen here and put on my green screen lights and we'll show you how to set up the green screen part of this okay so now i have a green screen behind me as you can see 
we're going to set up the Kia on the ATM mini software so go into the software and then you'll see one of the on the upstream upstream Kia, Kia you'll see chroma and that's what we want to set so basically you can it'll by default select the green you can go and select the green yourself um, by clicking over here and then going and sampling well it'll sample from an area i however don't like doing that and as you can see uh, let me just go full here my kia is yeah it's okay it's pretty good uh, i've already done most of the adjustments and that let me show you exactly what you need to do here so down the bottom here remember those settings you'll see that the setting there now is back to what we set it as with the little border and no green screen so we'll need to adjust that but for now i'm going to go full screen and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here you'll see there's color one color two set color one because that's just going to give you a straight up white background and then you can see like over here i've haven't cropped in enough on that side and I've cropped in probably a bit too much you'll see over here doo, 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 up there and you can see I have already cropped in and that side I have already cropped in as well so the way we crop in is the mask as I said to you on the other one the mask over here is basically the way that they do cropping so you just set it in and you can then set basically in from top bottom right uh, wherever you want to in this case we need to adjust the the right a bit uh, wrong way so we're just going to adjust that until it's gone this is also where you can go and check that your key is not showing if you go over using the key adjustments here and you see if i mess up the background you'll see my key i can actually see there now in the corners is obviously not working properly so you just mess with these adjustments until such time as you have a nice key. The secret to a decent green screen is light. Flat surface and lots of light on your green screen. You'll see I've actually got two lights over here shining onto just the green screen behind me. And I've got a light above me here shining onto me to try and separate me from the green screen. All of those things basically make a nice, as you can see, there's no spots. I'm not flickering around the edge or anything like that it's a pretty decent key once you're happy with the key obviously you know you can just go and click on the pc again and i think what we need to do is a is definitely not the setting the way we want to so i'm just going to put the white back on there and then i'm going to just redo this over here and I'm going to reallocate it to A so if I go B it's a bit bigger A is a bit smaller and of course full screen so now I have a nice selection where I can pretty much select and move myself around depending on what game I'm playing or if I'm in the way or whatever you don't just need to have it on the left hand side obviously like with the picture in picture you can actually go and move yourself anywhere on the screen I mean it's not even uh, if you want to be in the middle you know maybe you want to be okay that's a bit, bit big okay uh, you want to be in the middle too far Maybe you want to be in the middle of your game player. Move yourself to the middle and set it to A or B so that you have it preset. Don't forget after you've done all of this to go and save because trust me, I've lost all these settings. I personally am going to stay there. But as I said, move yourself around, put yourself on top. The only thing you can't do is flip the image. I've tried that. You can't do that yet. Not with uh, the ATEM software anyway. And then I can go back to my PC and i'm ready to stream as i said before the only thing is there are ways in the software which we're not going to go into now but there are ways to actually set images that's over here in the media you can go and set uh, various images the problems with that are that image over here they're not just straight up 
gifts with transparency or anything like that. They are, I think they're TIFFs and they, they're quite a mission to, 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 uh, to create. But if you do decide to do it and you decide to go and put one on top, it will be on top of everything. So all the different video feeds that you've got here, it's going to sit right on top of that. So I don't personally find it very useful. I'll always go and add those later in my training. And uh, maybe if you're doing streaming, your game streaming, you'll want to go and, let me just lock that down. Maybe you'll want to go and do it here in OBS because you're gonna have to do your overlays for your subscribers and all that type of thing anyway. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that. This is a very brief overview of how to set this up for streaming, if that's what you're into. As I said, I can go more in depth on each individual item, but just let me know down below and I will, uh, I'll make videos on specifically those things. But basically this is, this is an awesome piece of hardware for, I think it's 350 euros. So it's about $350 as well. You can basically have four capture cards because that's what it supports. So you can have four inputs into this thing. You can have your PlayStation connected and your Xbox connected and your PC connected and still have your camera connected. Or you can have multiple cameras, which is what this is actually made for, is having different angles and if you're having podcasts or whatever the case is. Remember, any items that we've mentioned in this, including the ATM Mini, will be listed below with affiliate links. No extra cost to you. Or you can just buy me a cup of coffee if you so feel like it. And the support is all appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please thumbs up, like, subscribe, all those lovely things. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.